Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Robert McDonald. I work for the Nature Conservancy, which is a conservation NGO uh, that works in the U.S., all of Latin America, parts of Southeast Asia. We're in maybe 30 countries now. We work to preserve the diversity of life on Earth, to put it simply. Um, so one of my jobs is to think about global threats from agriculture to biodiversity mm -hmm. and what are different country chapters have been doing to address those. At any given moment, we have about a thousand uh, projects going on throughout the globe, and probably about half of those involve agriculture in one shape or form, uh, either trying to influence where agriculture is occurring, how it's occurring, or, or something on the demand side. Okay. So I, I sort of do the, the global science to back that up on the scientist spectrum. Oh, okay. So what's your educational background then? Um, I'm a landscape ecologist. I did my grad work at uh, Duke University at the School of the Environment. Okay. How many people uh, are part of the Nature Conservancy? Uh, we have about 3,500 staff globally. About 700 of those are scientists. So we try really hard to be uh, a science-based organization. Um, we also try hard to be a place-based organization, which is to say, most of our staff are not in our DC headquarters, they're out uh, in those projects helping conservation on the ground. So out of those 700 scientists, most of them are assigned to specific projects in specific countries and are helping do research on that specific side of the ground. Hmm. Our annual budget's about a billion dollars, so um, we're one of the three big environmental NGOs. The other two are World Wildlife Fund and Conservation International. Okay. So uh, this afternoon you were on a panel discussing um, uh, uh, biotechnology in agriculture and um, uh, its potential to contribute to sustainable agriculture. Uh, so what, uh, what were your goals for being on the panel? What, uh, why did you uh, want to participate in it? Um, we try to, to participate in these kinds of discussions. Uh, in general, we want to engage with the agricultural community, so whether that's agricultural producers or uh, big companies. Uh, after the talk, something from Monsanto came up. Uh, so we have to engage with the agricultural producers and, and ag companies because uh, they're part of one of the biggest conservation challenges. Um, the biggest human footprint on the earth is either cropland or ranch land, and that, those two land uses cause most of the species in common. So at a global level, that's why we have to work with ag. We want to have a conversation going with our producers so that uh, that production can be as efficient as possible and can limit damage to the environment. So um, that was sort of my goal for participating in this talk. Um, and how do you think that the uh, discussion went? I thought it went well. I thought it went well. Um, I came in not having a big background in biotech crops, per se, mm -hmm. um, and that was obviously the focus of some of the other panelists. Um, so my organization, uh, the Conservancy, aims to be agnostic about biotech. So mm -hmm. what we mean by that is that uh, if there's scientific evidence that there's some problem for the environment because of a biotech crop. We're going to speak up about that. We're going to mm -hmm. work with ag producers to limit that damage. If um, there isn't scientific evidence or if there's scientific evidence that biotech crops are helpful, we're going to talk about that. Um, but we try to avoid coming down hard on one side or other of this dichotomy. And it's kind of unfortunate that dichotomy is there. And yeah. I've seen it in this conference. It, it's turning into this black and white discussion about is biotech good, is biotech bad? Um, and we're trying to, to be somewhere in that gray zone and work pragmatically with uh, producers on the ground. It seems to me that that uh, dichotomy that you talked about, um, I see that in all sorts of places in discussions about science and it'll be set up as a false question, you know, is it good or is it bad? And, and then it seems like that when it's asked in that fashion, it ends up missing what I think is one of the most important points, and that is um, there's something that has potential good and bad uses, or um, uh, and uh, there's a discussion that needs to happen about 
how to use it. And then if you're saying, is it good or is it bad, then that completely misses that part of the, part of the discussion. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's true that um, the, that divide has made it hard for the two camps, environmentalists and sort mm-hmm. of the big ad companies, to talk. Uh, and we're certainly trying to bridge that divide. There's a great uh, initiative called the Keystone Initiative that we're part of, but it's also other environmental groups and then other environmental companies all getting together, talking and thinking about agricultural standards, sustainability. So it's those kind of efforts we like to be part of. Uh, but, but I would agree that any time there is polarization like that, uh, it makes talking difficult. And so I think that's our philosophy as an organization in general. Is we, we try to be pragmatic and be talking to both sides and avoid name-calling and shouting. Okay. So um, I wanted to ask you about uh, something that was mentioned uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, sort of alluded to here or there in um, uh, the panel discussions today and in, in other uh, talks that have uh, uh, happened during this conference, and that is about a trait uh, for nitrogen use efficiency for crops that would uh, need less fertilizer to get essentially the same um, uh, yield benefits. And I was wondering what you thought about that, like sort of a speculation about um, how that might affect uh, like nutrient runoff and then things like the Gulf dead zone, things like that? Um, it's a good question. Certainly nutrient runoff is one of the big issues we worry about. Uh, mm-hmm. For freshwater organisms, it's one of the big causes of species impairment. Um, and, you know, in principle, any technology, whether it's biotech or, or just improved management practices that reduce runoff from the site, is a positive. Part of the issue, uh, as I understand it, is that in many cases it makes economic sense to throw out a bit more fertilizer than you might need. And knowing that some of that extra fertilizer is going to wash off, but it's sort of, I've heard it called an insurance, you're putting out a bit more than you need. Um, so there's a set of economic incentives that are making farmers do that. Um, and any new technologies, whether it's biotech or just improved management practices that can decrease that amount of extra nitrogen coming off the field is is an environmental positive. There's no question.